Hello all and welcome back. Today I'm going to share an amazing thing that you can do in Microsoft Excel. So what happened was today I was answering questions in Facebook and I came across a question where a user asked how to create a row and a column highlighter. Now if you search the web, this question has been answered before. They have suggested two solutions. The first is to use conditional formatting with VBA. And the second one is VBA where you change the cell's interior color. Now the second option is a bad option because it messes with the worksheets formatting. So for example, if the cell has yellow color and if you change the color to let's say red, then it will become difficult for you to get that color back unless and until you are maintaining a separate worksheet where you store the previous color. It's pretty messy. So we'll not even try to get into that. I'm going to suggest you a third way, which uses Excel's inbuilt select method. Now this is really amazing because it does not mess with your worksheet formatting. So let's check it out. Let's quickly launch the Visual Basic Editor by pressing the shortcut key Alt F11. If you're not sure what Visual Basic Editor is, then I recommend watching the video Visual Basic Editor and Introduction. Let's say we want the code highlighting to work with sheet one. Currently there's only one sheet. So let's say I want it to work on this worksheet. Okay, let's go back. So right click on sheet one and click on view code. This will open the code module of sheet one. In the object drop down, which is this, click on worksheet. VBA will automatically insert the worksheet selection change event. This event runs when the selection changes on a worksheet. So we will use this event. We will declare three different range objects. One for the row, one for the column, and one for the union of those two ranges. The first one I will call RNG call. Dim RNG call as range. The second I will call RNG row as range. And the third I'll simply call RNG, dim RNG as range. We will be working with events. So let's introduce error handling. If you're not sure how error handling works, then see the video error handling and debugging part one. So we'll type on error, go to row. Oh. Let's define the label. And here I can show the error description. And then I'm going to resume to the next label, which is called let's continue. And then I'm going to create that label. I've explained about this in that video. So do watch that video if you're not aware how this works. And finally, exit sub. Okay. Now we will turn the events off. So I will type application dot enable events is equal to false. And then I'll copy the same line and I will paste it here and I'll set it to true. The reason why I'm doing this is because if an error happens, the events are already switched off. So next time the code will not run. So I'm doing a proper error handling where I am re-enabling events when there is an error. Now let's write the code. We will first initialize the RNG call variable. So set RNG call is equal to columns target dot column target is the cell that we'll select so i'm trying to get the column of that cell similarly i'll get the row of the selected cell so i will type set rng row is equal to rows target dot row and finally i will create a union of these two ranges so it becomes one range set rng is equal to union rng call rng row Next, I will select this range, RNG dot select. And also I will activate the target so that the selection does not move from the selected cell. You notice we are selecting the range and we are activating the target. This is the reason why I switched off enable events. This is required because we will be selecting a cell and we do not want the worksheet selection change to get triggered via code. So enable events will stop that from happening. Now, if you go back to the worksheet and if you select a cell, see what happens. See, 
how the row and the column gets highlighted. This also does not interfere with the formatting of the cell. Let's test this. I'm going to go back and I'm going to comment this code for a moment. And then I am going to select certain cells and I'm going to color the cells yellow. Now, if I go back to the code and if I uncomment this, and if I go back to the worksheet and if I select the cell, see the color of the cell, which was already there does not get affected. And hence, it's a very bad idea to use a code which changes the color of the row and the column because that messes up with the existing format of the worksheet. Now, what if you wanted this for all worksheets, not for just one worksheet? Okay, so what I'll do is I'll go back and I will comment this code. Now, the code is in the sheet code module. If you want this code to work for all worksheets, then the code has to be in this workbook code module. So right click on the this workbook code module and click on view code. Next, select workbook from the object dropdown. And in the procedure dropdown, select sheet selection change event. Okay, we can delete this. We don't need this. Next, go back here and copy this code from here and paste it here. Okay, I'm going to uncomment this and I'm going to delete this. We don't need this anymore. Now, if you go back to the worksheet, you'll notice that it works on sheet one, even though the code is not in the code module of sheet one. Now let's insert a second sheet. If you click on any cell on this worksheet, see what happens. It works here as well. So remember, if you want the row highlighter to work on all worksheets, put the code in this workbook. And if you want the code to work for a particular worksheet, then put the code in that relevant sheet code module. So what do you think of this row and column highlighter? Do leave a comment in the comment section below. I would love to know your thoughts. Also, if you have still not subscribed to this channel, then go ahead and subscribe to this channel by clicking on the bell icon. This way you will get notified when I put up such videos. Also, if you are planning to learn visual basic programming from scratch, then there's a separate playlist. I would recommend watching that because I have arranged topics in a specific sequence that will really help you learn visual basic programming from scratch. And if you like the videos and if you want to extend support, then go ahead and like those videos, share those videos. And I'll see you soon with my next amazing thing that you can do in Microsoft Excel.